What's up everyone, it's Scotty with Money Vesting. In this video, we are going to be talking about a commentary PDF from BlackRock, which talks a little bit about the equity markets, uh, three to four different themes, investment themes that they talk about, and underweight versus overweight on the strategic and tactical uh, direction of stocks, credit markets, government debt, and private equity markets as well. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and find it helpful. If uh, Make sure that you drop a like and of course subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. If you're interested in joining and of course getting access to all the buy and sell alerts, options alerts, straight ideas, everything's going to be included as well as the 16% annual discount available till the end of this month. And after that, it is going to expire. So make sure that you take advantage of it while it's here. So first things first, I want to talk about this report from Goldman Sachs. It's a little bit different. It's not from BlackRock. And what we have really seen in this, uh, you know, really goes to show how much um, risk averse the markets still are in this market environment, right? Even though we've already pushed up year to date very, very nicely, uh, mutual funds and ETF in outflows a year to date, and these are in billions of dollars, and money market funds are at the highest at over $7 trillion, right? And despite the market's move to the upside, US equity has actually seen outflows in mutual funds and ETF. Uh, quite interesting, right? So $58 million of negative outflows here coming in. Non-US equity, uh, seven, uh, basically $52 billion. And then bonds uh, at over $137 billion. And money market funds have seen over $707 billion. So just this vast difference between money market funds and not to mention US equity funds and non-US equity funds is also just pretty crazy. And, and even though markets have pushed up, mutual funds and ETS have seen outflows uh, in that are focusing on US equity. So quite an interesting difference here in the market. And this right here is also from Goldman Sachs talking about institutional positioning is light amid weaker flows. So retail investors have lightened positions and institutions have rotated into cash. So and again, there's a lot of cash sitting on the sidelines right now, right? So if you think about what the markets can do without that cash right now, just try to imagine what markets will do once that cash finds its way back into the market. Just insane rallies will erupt like volcanoes in the market, literally, not even kidding, because uh, there's a lot of cash sitting on the sidelines. And institutional, more specifically, big money has been moving into cash. And we've talked about the, you know, the, fo the fund flows and how everybody's kind of positioned right now in the market. Money market accounts among investors are also at a record high, uh, which is in like in the trillions of dollars. And right now, what this is showing you is really hedge fund net exposure uh, at the moment. And uh, this is 2022 year end versus current. So we are seeing a bit of an increase in the hedge fund net exposure. Um, then we've also got change in U.S. equity mutual fund cash positions. Uh, so these are cash positions which have obviously increased quite a lot, which we just looked at on the other chart. Uh, again, $707 million. Money market funds, these are basically cash. Um, and then foreign investors, a net demand has increased a little bit. And this is all going to be retail, right? So retail investors, uh, equity versus bond fund flows. So they have seen a bit of a decrease in equity uh, funds versus bond fund flows and equity versus cash. Uh, equity have obviously also declined a little bit. So we have seen um, you know, rotating into cash a little bit um, from, from both retail and institution. Active equity fund flows uh, have seen a little bit of an increase. Passive equity fund flows have seen a bit of a decrease and change in net margin debt substantially increasing uh, from the year ending in 2022. Sentiment has overall increased. So again, you can see from 2020 end, 2022 end to where we are now, it has overall increased. So this is going to be from BlackRock. And uh, this again came out on May 15th, so just five days ago, uh, weekly commentary. And I wanted to go over some of the more specific things that they talked about uh, in this report, really kind of going over the themes, investment themes, and of course, their their uh, analysis of stocks and bonds and, and what's to happen in the future. Um, now, this is one thing that they talked about, which is volatility brews. And uh, we're basically looking at the volatility, which is the VIX and the move index, ticker symbol MOVE. And what they're mentioning is that it's really, it's really brewing right now on the back of this US debt ceiling debate, right? With all these negotiations going on, there is a big concern that volatility is going to once again start to move back up if we get closer and closer to that X date, which is going to be June 1st. So obviously, over the last couple weeks, uh, there's been a lot of debate and a lot of discussion around the US debt ceiling. Last couple of days here, this past week, we've seen some progress being made. Um, but if 
uh, there's not a final decision that comes out of this debt ceiling debates by June 1st. Uh, I think volatility is going to be definitely be on the move. And this is something that they talked about. So a delay in lifting the U.S. debt limit as well as the euro area debt crisis spurred a bout of market volatility in 2011. Uh, U.S. Treasury bill yields seen as the most vulnerable to late payment jumped, as we have also talked about, right? That's one of the reasons why I'm not actually going long on TMF just yet, because if this continues to drag on and we see it till the final hour, the debt ceiling either gets raised or suspended, uh, then yields regardless are still going to be under a lot of pressure. They're going to be vulnerable. Um, and S&P 500 fell about 17% back then between July and August of 2011. Uh, policy rates were near zero back then. Deflation risk were emerging. The Fed's balance sheet was expanding. All that provided a cushion. The backdrop is very different today. Bond market volatility has already surpassed 2011 levels, right? So if you could come take a look, the orange line, which is the move index, it's already much higher than that of 2011. Right, so the significance or the magnitude of this default obviously is much, much higher 12 years later than it was in 2011 because the debt limit and the debt number was obviously much lower. Um, so 2011, as markets grapple with central banks trade off, either live with some inflation or crush economic activity, uh, equity volatility is more muted, yellow line, yet we don't think the stocks have been immune. Just a few major tech stocks account for almost all the S&P 500 returns this year, something that we have talked about. So very, very narrow breath and a lot of concentration. And our conclusion, brace for higher volatility because of the combined effect of debt ceiling concerns and financial cracks from rate hikes. That's what they mentioned. And I, I think that's a fair assumption to make because there is risks associated with this narrow leadership in the market. And not to mention there is volatility just kind of like very, very subdued so far this year. And if you do get some spikes here, here and there based on these macro events, uh, it is possible that we do start to see the markets roll over considering how overbought we already are. And not to mention the, 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 market breadth. Uh, this right here is macro takes. So we're expecting U.S. inflation to sell around 3 to 4% by end of 2023. Uh, that assumes goods prices will cool as uh, spending habits shift to services and higher interest rates soften the labor market, subduing wage growth. So wage growth also has been a big, pretty big concerning piece of the overall inflation picture. And last week's April CPI data showed that core goods Prices surged and core services inflation, excluding shelter, stayed sticky through the last three months. That's true, right? Headlines coming down, core staying sticky. And that means annual core inflation is running close to 5% uh, in the three months to April, too high for the Federal Reserve uh, to basically cut rates or pause, uh, in my opinion, is what I'm getting out of this. The one glimmer of hope, core services, including uh, inflation, excluding shelter, did decline in April, but we would not see, we would not need to see that decline extend over a longer period to prove that underlying inflationary pressures are easing. And they also mentioned that the persistence of inflation is why we don't expect the Fed to cut rates in 2023. We think the effects of higher interest rates amplified by credit tightening due to rate hikes should ease inflationary pressures later this year. Uh, and finally, these are the investment themes that they pretty much mentioned is pricing in the damage. So recession is foretold uh, as central banks try to bring inflation back down to policy targets. It's the opposite of past recessions. Rate cuts are not on the way to help support risk assets in our view. And that's something that I think we need to all understand is that the Federal Reserve only needs to cut rates if they see a motive, right? That's something that I talked about in my previous video is that if the Federal Reserve doesn't have a motive, right? If there's no intention to cut rates or no incentive to cut rates, then they're really not going to, right? And that incentive or that motive can come from a recession. It can come from deflationary issues or it can come from a full-blown crisis, right? It has to fix something. They're not gonna cut rates just for the sake of it. It has to fix something, right? Every single move that they're doing is with a purpose. It's with a purpose, right? Think about this for a second. What if they're raising rates with a goal in mind? There's an objective to solve. There's a purpose, right? To cool inflation, to bring it down. So they'll have the same logic applied when they're cutting rates, right? Because why else would they cut rates? They're not cutting rates just for the sake of it, right? They would cut rates to solve something. And that solving is going to be a problem, which is a recession or deflationary issue or a crisis. We don't have any of those, right? So again, we have to ask ourselves the question, is the market really correct in pricing in all these rate cuts? Or are we just like, you know, really off the radar when we're pricing in rate cuts. We'll, we'll see. Rethinking bonds. Um, and again, they do offer fixed income, finally offers income after yields surge globally. So that's another investment theme. And then living with inflation because they do expect inflation to be at around 3 to 4% uh, for 2023. And of course, uh, a little bit of a uh, 
you know, elevated inflation levels, so living with that are some of the investment themes that they are talking about in this report. And then finally, talking about some of the strategic versus tactical views. Strategic is going to be long term, tactical is going to be six to 12 months. Uh, when it comes to equities, they are overweight long term, a uh, little bit underweight in the tactical view, six to 12 months. So they do see a little bit of underperformance in the in the short term uh credit markets they, they are o they're overweight long term neutral in the tactical view short term government bonds neutral right now and underweight long term because equities are still yet to outperform in the long term it makes sense why they're long term bullish on equities and long term not so bullish uh on government bonds and private markets they are a little bit underweight uh in the long term as well so that's the entire report that i wanted to go over for uh for us uh, for blackrock and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and what do you think? And I think the general idea is that inflation is going to be with us for some time. The Federal Reserve is not going to cut rates um, and also some investment themes that bonds right now in the short term do offer a little bit more value relative to stocks at the moment. And this is, again, coming from BlackRock. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.